Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about antibacterial substances. The human host in general possess some antibacterial substances with which they are combat the continuous onslaught of bacterial pathogens. And these antibacterial substances are either produced by the host itself or by the certain normal flora or indigenous bacteria. The most important uh, antibacterial substances are lysozyme, bacteriocins, beta lysine and other polypeptides. Along with these things, we can also see the complements as well as the propadine too. Okay, so let's begin with the first one, lysozyme. Lysozyme is the enzyme that breaks the beta 1,4 glycosidic bond between n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid in peptidoglycone. And we know that this peptidoglycon is the main composition of the bacterial cell wall. And once the bond is going to break between this NAM and NAG, that is N acetyl muramic acid and N acetyl glucosamine. So, what happens means water in the surrounding media enters into the cell and the cell is going to swell. So, once it is going to swell, eventually it gets burst and that process is called as lysis. And this lysozyme mainly occurs in the body secretions like uh, uh, tears, saliva and other body fluids and presumably functions as a major line of non-specific defense against the bacterial infection. So that's how the lysozyme is involved in protecting us okay by lysing the bacterial cell wall. Then moving to the second type that is bacteriocins. Many of the normal flora that is normal bacterial flora of the host body synthesize and release some sort of a plasmid encoded toxic proteins example cholecins and staphylococcin collectively called as bacteriocins and these uh, bacteriocins will inhibit or kill closely related bacterial species or even different okay and may give their producers an adaptive advantage against the other bacteria. That means they are providing us the adaptive immunity against the other pathogens or other bacteria. And these uh, bacteriocins, that is toxic proteins, as we call them as bacteriocins, is a little bit uh, different from the antibiotics. Don't get confused. Antibiotics is different and bacteriocins is different though both are going to be synthesized by uh, microorganisms only. These uh, bacteriocins are going to have a narrow spectrum activity whereas the antibiotics are going to have a broad spectrum activity. That is the major difference between the bacteriocins and the antibiotics. And most bacteriocins are produced by gram negative bacteria. Rather than the gram positive, most of the bacteriocins are produced by gram negative bacteria. Example, check E. coli and it is going to produce a bacteriocin compound called as colocin. In the same manner, Bacillus subtilis, uh, which is going to be of a subticillin, which is a positive. Okay. So, recently it has discovered that some gram positive bacteria produce bacteriocin like peptides so example is lactic acid bacteria which produce a nisin a is a type of a bacteriocin that was released by lactic acid bacteria which uh, this nisin is uh, able to inhibit the growth of wide range of gram positive other bacteria okay so this is all about the bacteriocin then we will move to the beta lysine and other polypeptides Beta lysine is a cationic polypeptide synthesized uh, thing and released by the blood platelets. So, mainly it is going to be released by our blood platelets and kill some gram positive bacteria by disrupting their plasma membranes. So, our platelets are going to synthesize a polypeptide chain called as beta lysine, which has a capacity to kill gram positive bacteria by rupturing their plasma membranes and the other cationic polypeptides produced in the host may include like uh, leukins, plaquins, scropins and phagocytin. 
So along with this, a zinc containing polypeptide named as prostatic antibacterial factor is secreted by the prostate glands in males, uh, which acts as an important antibacterial substances. So these are all about the antibacterial substances specially. And now we'll move to another important concept that is complements or the complement system, which is also the one of the thing acting as an antibacterial substance. So as we know, what is a complement? The serum protein, that means the serum contains certain proteins in the form of a cassade or group, a group of serum proteins of the complement system are simply called as complement proteins. Then what is a complement system? It's a biochemical cassette that means group or system of proteins present in the blood serum is called complement system. When the inactive forms of uh, these complement proteins are converted into the active forms by various adaptive or innate that means by natural immunity or by acquired immunity they damage the membranes of microbial pathogens either destroying them or facilitating their clearance that means they will enhance the immune system either by the humoral or the cell mediated and not only that they also enhances our macrophages which comes under the non-specific defense mechanism and these reactions between the complement proteins and the cellular receptors trigger the activation of the cells of both the as I said is innate or adaptive immunity okay and the complement system is going to be uh, having of three types that means the complements are getting activated by three pathways like one is going to be the classical pathway another one is the alternative pathway and the third one is lectin pathway we will discuss all these pathways in a separate uh, uh, topic as a complement system in detail okay there you can go through all these pathways what is a complement what the functions of all these complements okay so here just have a brief note of this one that the complements are get, getting activated by three pathways one is the classical pathway which is mainly involved in specific or acquired immunity whereas the other two pathways that is alternative and lectin pathways are important in innate immunity or non-specific immunity so this is all the three pathways that is classical pathway lectin pathway and alternative pathway so where they are going to activating the cells okay by having the breakage of the complement they are attaching with it and this all we'll discuss in detail in the complement system topic okay so the next one is a propagene so propagene is a glycoprotein especially occurs in the blood serum okay and it was discovered by uh, Louis Pilemer in the year 1954 of the Institute of Pathology and it is known that Propagene plays a part in tissue inflammation as well as in engulfing of the pathogens by phagocytosis. And it is also known to help to neutralize some viruses. That means in antigen antibody reactions, we had a one type of the antigen antibody reaction called as neutralization. So in that neutralization, the viral neutralization is going to occur with the help of this propagene. So that neutralization topic you can go through in the concept of immunology, okay, so in detail. Now the propadine expresses its principal function in the alternative complement pathway. I told you previously that we had the three types of the pathways in the complement activation where classical, alternative and lectin. So this propadine is going to express its main function in the alternative complement pathway. So what it is doing? This uh, propadine is going to activate an enzyme called as C3BBB, okay, which is sometimes called as C3 convertase. Now, this C3 convertase is going to combine with the propadine and giving rise to an enzyme called as C5 convertase. What is it? C5 convertase. Because this uh, C3 convertase, it cleaves more C3 to C3A and C3B and it is stabilized by the propadine. So the breakage of this C3 convertase is going to be stopped and making it to be active by this propadine. 
and when it is going to have an addition of this C3B, it is going to be called as C5 convertase. Don't bother about all these things. We'll discuss in detail about this one in the complement system. Okay. Now, the C3B, that is C3 convertase, along with the propadine is going to be called as C5 convertase. Now, once this uh, C5 convertase, then it is going to bind and it is going to involve in neutralization of viruses and removing of the tissue inflammations all these things by uh, enhancing the phagocytosis okay now this propadine uh, is going to be expressed its principal function in the alternative pathway as i told you okay and the propadine is going to mainly exist in two forms how many forms two forms propadine uh, in the native form okay is going to be of in the fresh serum and the active propadine obtained usually or purification that means without any activation the propadine is found in the fresh serum and the active propadine can be obtained usually on purification okay so this is all about the uh, antibacterial substances in brief okay thank you